Welcome to another R&DW's Adventures, a geocaching trip this time. I'm Daryl. And I'm Renee. And today we're on the Clinton River Trail, which is another one of these rail trails. In Europe they call them disused railroads. Disused. Here they're just abandoned right-of-ways that have been converted. To fun trails for us. Yeah, great use for the trail systems in my opinion. Absolutely. So, come with us and let's see if we find anything interesting. All right, so let's see what we got. Ooh, there's stuff in here. Stuff. The log, of course. Ooh, look and, at and this. And a geocoin. A geocoin. It's not often you see the geocoins in Ooh, celebrating 20 years of geocaching. Yeah, for this year. And it's one of the big blue switch coins. You know what that's all about? Sort of. Well, it's uh, back in 2000, the uh, Clinton administration signed a bill turning off selective availability. It which, says that on here. Yeah, which enabled geocaching. So oh. the blue switch is just, you know, this thing that people have created to, cool. yeah, to make it uh, satellites. <laughs> yeah, to make it seem like something actually happened, but it was just some code that got changed to disable selective availability. So that we could use it. So that we can use it to find Tupperware in the woods. Very fun. Or lock the locks in this case. Well. Modern day Tupperware. So what, why don't we take that and move that along? Okay. And I'll put this back. So what was selective availability? Well, selective availability was this thing that for military reasons gave us an error on civilian GPSRs. So you were always wondering if you were right or not. Oh. So it could be hundreds of feet off. Okay. So when they turned off the selective availability, suddenly our accuracy went to about 30 feet. Oh, that's good. That makes a lot of sense. And that's why we can actually hide caches now. Okay. I think over there. Okay, we know what happened when they turned off the big blue switch, but how did we actually get to be like, where did geocaching come from? Who, who invented it? Well, Dave Almer hid the original geocache, which at the time he called the uh, GPS stash hunt. Okay. So it was a, a five gallon bucket with a bunch of junk in it, like a, a Georgia the Jungle VHS tape. Yeah, VHS. Oh, wow. Uh, a can of beans. Beans. And he, he oh. half buried it okay. in the ground at the edge of his property, right near a road, and posted the coordinates to the uh, uh, Usenet group so people could come and find it. Uh, several days later, I want to say it was about a week, Mike Teagues actually came up, found it, and hence found the first geocache, and the game was essentially born. Where was that? That's in Oregon, and right now, you can actually go to visit the original stash plaque. Okay. And does he still live there? No, no, it's okay. been long gone, and there's a whole thing about uh, they uh, made sure to get land rights for per perpetuity for that uh, plaque to be there. But there is also a cache that's a little bit further up the hill uh, from that. Okay. But uh, they decided that stash had a bad connotation when they actually created the geocaching.com listing service. The name had been changed to geocaching. Okay, and that can of beans, we've seen it, haven't we? We have, it was making its rounds for a while. But today, talking about geocaches, we only found about five caches, still a fun day. Yes. Not a very long hike. Not a productive day, but a fun day. Yeah. Sunday so, fun day, it's okay. It, it's, it's a Sunday, we found some caches for the very last day of May of 2020. And it's actually really cold for May. And and you can still get your big blue switch through the end of 2020. So if you haven't already found a geocache this year and you're already a member of geocaching.com, go out, find a cache so that you can get the big blue switch souvenir for 2020. 